What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Bill. In this episode, part of me, a big part of me, really wants to just like button a few things up and, and drive up into the forest and go get a Christmas tree with the Aston Martin. But there's just so much work to be done and we're on a tight schedule so the shenanigans will have to wait till next year. Next Christmas, Aston Martin Christmas tree getting is gonna happen. But for now, this episode, we're gonna vinyl wrap the Aston Martin. Stay tuned. Before I get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor, and I believe the 2017 biggest supporter of Beast for Build, which is the mobile game Viking War of Clans. They just had a brand new update, adding new RPG elements and a new hero to the game, so there's new fresh stuff for you to check out. If you are a fan of the strategy RPG games of the 90s and the 2000s, then you're definitely going to love Vikings, and it's even more convenient now because it's right on your mobile phone. The game gives you the ability to choose your own playing style, whether that's building a really, really big fortress, an impregnable city, and raising your economy up, using diplomacy, hiring people to take out other people, or if you just want to get together with a couple of your closest buddies, raise a massive army, and just go plow through everybody else, that's also an option as well. Guys, grab this app now, play it for five minutes, and you're gonna see why over 12 million people are so addicted to this game. And on the plus side, the game is totally free. Support the channel now by heading to the link in the description. If you use that link to download the game, you'll start with a free protection shield and 200 bonus gold, which is a big bonus, and you can use the gold to build your stuff faster and get a much faster build up on your initial base. Thanks so much to Vikings War Clan for sponsoring the episode. Now let's get down to work. Gonna go ahead and get started on the roof because I think it's an easy starting panel. We're also doing this one a different color. We're gonna do gloss black on the roof. Uh, and so I've cleaned it, I've prepped it, uh, but then I noticed that there's a little bit of imperfection here, a little damage from the wreck. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand that down and clean it up once more. And then we'll go ahead and apply that gloss black vinyl. About a half an hour to 45 minutes later and we have half of the roof vinyl wrapped. And uh, the thing that I've learned is I still don't like vinyl wrapping. I've vinyl wrapped a couple panels in my day and uh, every time I've done it, it's been a monotonous, time consuming process that infuriates me the whole way through. And looking at the finish that I have on that vinyl wrap, even in the places that we did it perfectly correctly, I don't really like the finish and I, can, I know that I can paint better. I didn't paint this car originally, I didn't plan on painting this car originally because I had temperature concerns, which I still kind of do, but I think I've got a way to get around it. Um, so what I'm saying is, is uh, vinyl wrapping's canceled, it's painting time. The other really big benefit of paint is I wanted to have a somewhat unique color of white, a unique take on white, and vinyl wrap only has about four different versions of white that they allow you to do. Uh, so we went with plain white for this car, um, and I'd like to get some sort of other type of white on the car. So. Now I get to. So uh, I'm canceling the vinyl wrap. Uh, I'm gonna go get paint tomorrow morning and this is now a painting episode. Welcome to painting with B is for build. This is gonna be a DIY uh, at home in your garage paint job. I've done plenty of these. They, uh, they sometimes turn out great. Stay tuned again. Okay, I'm back for another day. We're gonna start doing paint prep here soon but before I do that, I went home and I watched a bunch of instructional videos on how to vinyl wrap and different things like that. And I got kind of jazzed on it. So now I want to try it out, try some things that I've learned. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrap the roof because we only did one half of it. Uh, I'm going to wrap it myself, see how fast I can get it done. If I can uh, use any of these techniques that I learned online and uh, get it done any faster. I still totally plan on painting, but uh, the roof could use a rewrap anyways. So why not do it? Let's see it. Let's have some fun. not a fan of vinyl wrapping. Uh, the techniques that I learned online, they, they didn't work at all. I just, uh, I don't have the patience to learn this skill right now. I'm sure I could. The brand of vinyl wrap is like, uh, it's not the best brand, but it should still be easier than that. So, um, moving on. Now, because of YouTube schedule, which is a great thing. Uh, I only have two days, including today, to get this car painted. Um, so I still will have to go back and vinyl wrap the roof because I don't have time to paint the roof, let that dry, then cover it, and then paint the car white. 
bummer. Um, so we're gonna vinyl wrap the roof, paint the rest of the car white. The vinyl wrapping of the roof will uh, happen today, I think. And for now, I'm gonna move on to prepping the car for paint, which means everything needs to be sanded, um, all the little finishing work needs to be done, and then we need to start masking it off and getting ready to be able to spray. Okay, I did a little bit of light body work here. I, I removed the uh, side grill thing from in there because that, that was gonna be really hard to paint around and, and mask off, actually impossible. So I removed that. Uh, a little bit of primer work over here, make sure we have no more bare metal or fiberglass and a little bit of sanding. So now we're good to go ahead and move on. And the next step that we're gonna be doing when we move on is sanding up the car and preparing it. Um, and, and to do that, I'm also gonna do some masking. So when you, you gotta scuff up any surface that you wanna paint on. So on an auto body like this, about 400 grit on the stock paint. On anything that's primered like that right there, go ahead and use a 600 grit. Actually, every paint is different. Read the tech sheet for your paint and it will tell you uh, how to prepare it. Now for these things like this, it stands out right here. Rather than uh, sanding anywhere near this and possibly scuffing it, go ahead and cover it up with tape. Basically mask it off early and then you can sand around and your odds of, uh, of accidentally hitting that piece and damaging it are gonna go way, way down. I would do it, what I would do is use your automatic sander, go around it and then come back in with your hand and get all the close spots. So uh, quick scuff up, quick sand down on the entire body except for the roof. We don't have to paint the roof. Foiled once again by that stupid automotive body protectant plastic crap, that stuff. Peeling that off took like 45 minutes and then getting the residue and crap up from underneath it took another 30 minutes. It's just such a waste of time. I hate that stuff. I hate it so much. Like I said before, if you find a car and it's like covered, the whole car is covered in it, don't touch it. Don't buy it. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna continue sanding uh, all the way to the back, right around the back tail lights. That's where I'm gonna stop and we're gonna start taping stuff up and I'll go to the other side as well. I'm not using the power sander for these bits right here because they're, they're uh, very curved and you can burn through the paint very easily. So I'll be using a hand sander for that. Now that the side of the car is sanded, we're moving on to the back. We're gonna tape up everything here in the back. Chelsea already got started on the tail light and the side marker. We're gonna tape off everything in the back that we wanna protect and go ahead and then sand the back. Of course, I forgot to film the sanding of the back, but you guys know what sanding looks like, so that's all done. Now, the next thing is we're gonna go in and uh, Chelsea and I are gonna come around by hand and do the detail sanding work and all of these like little cracks and, and tight spots right there. We're gonna do all that by hand. Detailed sanding is just now wrapping up and it's time to move over to the doors because you assholes will not let me paint a car without getting in the door jams these days. If it were up to me, I'd just leave them, but we're gonna go ahead and paint the door jams on this one. Um, these doors are swan doors, so they open up. They're super, super heavy. And uh, the shocks are not inside them because they can't be right now. So this is gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky to paint and tricky to work on right now, but I gotta get this whole door panel off the car and then we will start sanding and prepping the door jam to be painted when we paint the car. of last night uh, removing the inner door panels and prepping the door jams and the doors for paint so that's all done there uh, 
Painting those is a pain in the ass. Taping them off and masking them is a pain in the ass, but I'm doing it this time. I'm doing it for you guys. So uh, now it's a new day. It's bright and sunny out, which is actually a really good thing because this sun is gonna heat up the shop a little bit more than normal, and that'll keep our average temperature up, which is really important for this painting. Um, also, bees for build beanies are in. They look great. I'm so stoked on these. So uh, they are gonna ship out earlier than I uh, had projected. Uh, they ship out tomorrow and um, yeah, so international people, uh, very likely that they will get to you before Christmas. So they're no longer on pre-sale, they're just on sale. So pick them up if you want one. Um, okay, so what I'm doing right now though is I'm on my way to the paint store. Uh, we I don't know exactly what color I want. I know I want a white color. So for instance, if someone was like 200, 300 feet away from the car, they look, they'd say, that's a white car. But I want some variation of that white. So I want something that's a little bit unique. So if someone gets up close to the paint, they'll look at it and they'll think, well, this isn't uh, just, you know, this isn't Aston Martin factory white color this is something custom so uh, I'm gonna go down there check out a bunch of different little cards and stuff like that and then we'll pick up some paint and head back to the shop got all the painting supplies we had to end up going with just a plain white color I didn't have to I chose to uh, because this is an easier type of paint to spray and we have a lot of temperature concerns in the shop right now so uh, basically what we're gonna do is I'm spraying single stage because and this is this is where just YouTubing sucks sometimes. You don't have a lot of time for schedule, so different things make different decisions. Obviously, if we painted the BRZ six times, we can obviously paint this car twice if we ever want to, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that heater to just blast the shop up to 70 degrees, and then I will spray this paint, and it's single stage, so it's just two coats. It'll take about 15 minutes, and then by the, shop, by the time the shop cools off, this paint will have gone through a lot of its catalyzing process, and then that's it. And then by the time the fumes like leave the shop, I could potentially turn the heater back on. Why I can't spray a three-stage paint is you'd spray your base coat. By the time the base coat had dried up, just like our singer stage would dry up, I could, I, we need to turn that thing back on. And if I turn the thing back on and I have fumes in the shop, the shop will explode. So it's mainly just uh, not wanting to run any type of heaters with any type of fumes in the air so I don't blow myself up. So we're doing a single stage paint, we're doing single stage white. Uh, the other reason that I did that also was because of preference. I looked at a lot of these different like colors with metallics and refraction colors and stuff like that and I didn't find a secondary color that I liked along with white and black. So it was like gonna be white and black and like robin's egg blue or white and black and deep blue or white and black and green. I just didn't really find anything that I was digging. So I just wanted to stick with like, we're just going panda colors on this, white and black, which I really do enjoy. I love the look of the Evora. So going, going that direction. Paint's here. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the side mirrors just to make it easier for masking and stuff like that, as well as it's gonna be helpful for later on when we wanna paint this uh, trim around here. So side mirrors are gonna get removed. Did you guys know that Aston Martin Vantage side mirrors are not removable? I didn't know that. Yeah, they don't come off. They're just, uh, they're like welded to the frame of the door or something. You just gotta buy a new door if you want a new mirror. 100% uh, positive, that's the truth. Would not lie to you guys. So Chelsea is um, clean, we're moving on from that. Uh, Chelsea has uh, done like a, just a water wipe down on the car to remove all the excess uh, dust and stuff like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and clean up the hood and try our hand at vinyl wrapping one more time. We're gonna vinyl wrap the hood black. We vinyl wrap the roof. It's on there, it looks good, it looks pretty good, but the thing is, is I know I could paint better. So um, here's what, and Chelsea doesn't like the look of it, so I, here's what I think is gonna, it also scratches very, very, very easily, which is not good, because you can see the amount of like sap deposit we have on the back, so one piece of sap falls on that stuff, it's really gonna screw it up. Black vinyl wrap, I'm guessing, just all scratches super easily. So here's what's gonna be done about this. We're gonna leave it for now, and if I have time before the California trip, I'm going to repaint it before we head to California, but if not, I will repaint it after we go to California. So before this car is done, that, that roof will be painted, but for now, it's vinyl wrapped, and it's the right color, so I'm happy about that. Moving on, we're gonna go ahead and mask up the car, uh, preparing the car to get painted. We just have to, you know, obviously mask up all the areas we don't wanna paint. So the rear spoiler, the wheels, the door, the interior. We don't wanna paint the interior. We'll mask it all off. We're 
getting close to painting time. So what we did was we masked off the entire car. You can see that we have one piece that goes all the way from the back down under the hood, covering up the whole engine bay and our front core support. Then going back, we have the doors, the door jams. That was a total pain in the ass, but we got it. Uh, so that's all set up. Wheels. We forgot to do the back here. We're going to come back and do that real quick. So the, we got to mask off that um, rear diffuser. And then uh, we're starting to cover up stuff in the shop like the television, the parts in the back corner there, the door panels, um, and then all of this stuff down here. We're going to protect the shop from overspray because when you paint in a place like this, it's going to get on everything. Okay, the shop is as protected as it's going to be. The door kind of looks like a ghost over there on camera. Um, the next step is to prep the surface of the car. Now, I can't stress this enough. It's super, super important. After you sanded, um, you want to use a, uh, a wax and grease remover like Prep All or something similar. Um, we're gonna do three passes on the entire car with prep all uh, the only time I've had surface contamination that's ruined a paint job when I went back and looked at the footage of myself preparing the car and cleaning the surface it was a spot that I missed on the surface came back painted it had problems so this is a very 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 important step the other thing that we have going on here is high humidity very low temperature so we're gonna be very very prone to fish eyes so the best surface preparation uh, will give us better results. So that's what we're gonna do, three to four passes on the entire car, and then we'll be ready to paint. All right, the car has been thoroughly cleaned up. It is prepared, we're ready to spray on it. So I've got a checklist of the last few things that I need to do. I need to wet the floors, heat up the room, set cameras, and different stuff like that, and then we're gonna go ahead and spray. So the way this has to happen is the timing's pretty critical. We gotta heat up the room and then immediately spray, and then I'm out of here, and however it dries, it dries. Uh, a lot of people, uh, the, an email I frequently get is people asking about my spray gun because it is a handy little DIY spray gun um, that uh, can work on a non-industrial size air compressor, I will say. I mean, I still have a massive $500 air compressor. But uh, anyways, this is an Astro, this is a gun that was given to me a couple years ago by a company named Astro Pneumatic. And uh, the model is called a Euro Pro Evo T. So that's what I use. I don't know much about it, but it works for me and I get good results with it. I mean, good to my standards results with it. So for you guys that are wondering, that's that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and prepare everything, fill up the paint. The next thing you're gonna see me do is spray the door jams, and then I'll give you a little thumbs up, thumbs down on how it's going, and then we're gonna spray the rest of the car. Bad news guys, I really wish I had good news, but this is bad news. Uh, we're getting fish eyes. You can see along the panels, there's like fish eye there, fish eye there. That's what fish eyes look like as if you don't know. Um, and they are, you know, evenly spread out on surfaces that definitely were cleaned. If you see them all clustered like behind things, like behind the striker, that's probably just, yeah, you didn't clean well enough. Um, but these are surfaces, they're, they're showing up on surfaces that have definitely been cleaned well. And just to double check, because I was thinking maybe the heater had something to do with it. While the heater was off the entire time, I re-cleaned the whole rear bumper, uh, rear bumper panel, came back in and sprayed it, and shit, it was just worse than ever. So the paint's going on really well. This is like a super easy to spray paint. We're not getting runs or anything, and it actually looks really nice, but it's, it's riddled with fish eyes. So I'm pretty bummed about that. It's another B is for build paint job. You know, it never goes off without some sort of a problem. Uh, I'm going to hit up the paint. I'm going to take pictures of what we're seeing here. I'm going to hit up the paint store tomorrow and ask them for recommendations. I'm really hoping it's not a situation where we just can't paint at all because that would be terrible. Back in the shop, it's time to fix up this paint job and respray. So I did a lot of research about fish eyes and I feel like we have a good solution that makes me comfortable with respraying. So here's the deal. Um, fish eyes can be caused by a lot of different things. It's mainly something on the surface that you're spraying on, like a wax or silica particulate on the surface that you're spraying on. So you have a contaminated surface, which is why we cleaned the whole car three times yesterday. Um, or it could be water in the lines of your guns, water or oil getting in the lines of your guns. Both of those, are possible. So here's what we're doing to remedy it. First one, surface contamination. I've heard that the kerosene heater that we use, the, the heater that's in the shop, is a, it, it's powered off of this um, clean heat, odorless heater fuel. Nobody knows what the hell is in this stuff. 
So uh, the only way that we can eliminate that being a culprit is by just not using it. So I'm painting in the heat of the day today. It's supposed to get up to 50 degrees. That is the lowest temperature you can paint this paint in. And I'm gonna go with that. So fingers crossed that that is a warm enough temperature, but I'm not turning on that kerosene heater at all today. That will hopefully eliminate that. We obviously need to re-clean the car now very thoroughly, go back. I'm gonna do two more uh, cleanup jobs over the entire car in case there is any particulate that came off of that um, heater onto the car. The other thing um, is water or oil in your lines. So we're gonna go ahead and I bought a new air filtration system for the air compressor. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a, a big dedicated filter that goes onto the air compressor. Um, so it goes straight from the compressor to an oil water separator, which I will clean out. Then it, the hose goes down to an air filter, which I'm going to replace. And then it goes into the gun that has its own disposable filters on it as well. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into a paint job that you have to keep maintaining and stuff like that. So it's possible that our air filter on there, although it worked the last paint job we used, and I only use it during paint jobs, um, it's possible that that thing's just toast and it was letting uh, water or, or, or oil through the system. And then thirdly, the other thing that we're using is an additive to the paint and it's called fish eye eliminator and it's supposed to eliminate fish eyes. It's some controversial shit though because it does actually put silica into your paint and silica is the stuff, if it's on the surface, will cause you to have fish eyes. So if you come back to repaint this car or something like that and you don't properly sand, prep, et cetera, et cetera, it can cause fish eyes for the next paint job. Yeah. And this is a car that I would kind of like to be able to paint several times. So. But uh, I'm gonna add it because we, we really don't have any other options. So I'm gonna add that to the paint and then we're good to go. The only big worry now is do we have enough paint to paint the entire car? Hopefully, hopefully we will because I used quite a bit on the door jams and, and over here. So what we're gonna do once we start painting, I'll get there when I get there. So what we need to do right now though is sand off this rear bumper. All the paint that we put on the rear bumper is gonna get sanded off. Door jams are a second class citizen, so they're just gonna get a light scuffing. Well, no, they're not even gonna get scuffed. I'm basically gonna cover them with another coat of paint when we start painting, and that will fill in the fish eyes. So you'll see like, you know, tiny little indents or whatever uh, on the door jams. But the rear bumper I want it to look like glass, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand this whole thing down, sand out all the paint that we just sprayed on there to remove the fish eyes so we can start from scratch on the rear bumper. I fixed up the bumper, that was actually quite a challenge because the paint's not 100% dry yet, so it was really wanted to clump up and stuff on me, but uh, in the end I got it. Um, so the next thing, uh, prep the car again, so three full passes on the car, and then the next thing you're gonna see, spray and paint, fingers crossed, this time we're gonna make it happen. Let's spray this car white. I got a paint job on the car. It looks good. Like I said, this paint was really easy to spray. It's nice and shiny. There are some imperfections here or there. Uh, that's what you're gonna get with a paint job done inside a, a place like this. Like for instance, a, a bug decided to end its life on the paint right here. Uh, that you can tell but just by the way it's sitting there. That was like probably a couple hours after um, after we painted. It probably died from the fumes and then <laughs> fell down. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a good paint job all in all. It's, it's even, it looks good. I like the color. I'm pretty stoked on it. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heater back on and give it some time to dry. This is gonna look so good when we get the molding back on and everything else like that. All this other, uh, the masking and stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and take this masking off right now. All the other masking can stay because it's not actually on the auto body itself. And that's it, that's a wrap. 
Or maybe I should say that's not a wrap. And thank God, because I hate that stuff and I don't want to do it ever again. From now on, my default is going to be painting. It's faster for me, it's cheaper for me, and it's something that I want to get better at. So I'm going to continue to keep doing that. Now, the ventilation is a serious issue. The risk of explosion is not something that I take super lightly. So I'm going to continue to keep working on that. And maybe the answer is I just can't paint a lot of cars in the dead of winter like this, even though we're not quite in the dead of winter yet. Um, anywho, that's that's kind of the game plan. Now I saw on Instagram a lot of you guys commented that the fender flares weren't on the car for this episode and they didn't get painted in this episode. Everybody's like, rejoice! He's not gonna go wide body. Nope, I'm still going wide body. They just need to be modified first. So I'm gonna paint them off the car and then put them on the car. So we're not done painting, that's for sure. And uh, and we we have not canceled the plans for the wide body. It's it's very interesting split of people that like it and hate it. Um, and people are very adamant about both. But guys, just please keep in mind like. This, this one is not gonna stay stock. The Evora was nearly stock. We did some tasteful body modifications that I really love and I think that car is absolutely beautiful. I think it's much more beautiful than this car. Um, and I was happy with the way that that turned out. But I don't wanna leave this car staying as stock as it is. That would not make me happy. Uh, just seeing a basically bone stock Aston Martin VA Vantage sliding around doesn't get me nearly as excited as the idea of seeing the one that I envisioned sliding around. The one that's purpose built for sliding, sliding around. So that's that's what we have in store. Just hang in there with me guys. There's other things that are gonna support the wide body that'll make it not look as crazy. Or no, it'll still look crazy, but it just may, might, it, it'll help blend it in. When we get the side skirts and the front lip and the rear wing and things start coming together, you widen out the stance of the car and it won't be just the fenders that are coming off. It'll look good, just, just have some faith, have some faith. Or don't, and then just watch the finale and be like, damn, I was wrong, again. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you like Beast from Build, you wanna help out and support, head over to our shop at beastfrombuild.com. You can see our winter line of merchandise is available for pre-sale right now, except for the beanies, they just came in, so they're shipping out tonight. Uh, so you have this charcoal black color, and then you have the gray that I was wearing in the early, earlier today, actually. Um, and those are both on the store. And then we got our long sleeve shirts and our hoodies. Uh, sizes are running out, and they are a limited quantity, but if you you jump on them now you might be able to get one that's my sales pitch but really the show is very heavily supported by you guys purchasing that merchandise so thank you all so much that do that and uh have a merry christmas i didn't know how to end that sentence <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get out of here. It's been a long night. Um, and as always, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we're BS for Build on there or on Twitch or anywhere else you want to find us. We're BS for Build pretty much everywhere. And uh, I shared a little bit of behind the scenes with this and the fun process that we had with this uh, on there earlier today. So help us out. Join us on over there. That's about it, guys. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. I know this one was a long one. So thank, you to, thank you so much to all of you that have watched the entire thing. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have I not asked enough of you guys already? That's it. Peace.